All I could think about those first two years was the nose. And then all of a sudden, two years later, I paid a death claim. And I took that, I took that widow, that check, and I said, man, this stuff really works. If it hadn't been for me, that, 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 that lady and those two children would have had to live on $15,000. Now they got $150,000. Thanks to me and my concept and my business and my toughness, they got a fighting chance. Listen. Listen. Folks, that shocked me. Yeah, it sh and then all of a sudden I said, Art, you're thinking all wrong. See, all I could do was think of the, think of the ones I'd lost, the people that said no. Over that two years, I had a bunch of people that said yes. But I couldn't, be, I couldn't feel good about the yeses because all I thought about was the dadgum no's. I used to keep a little old uh, uh, pad, a little notebook. And on every page, I'd put the client's name, the wife's name, the kid's names, what he did for, you know, business, what, what he had, what I sold it. I had a whole notebook of dadgum clients. But I didn't think about the good things. At, at, at the end of two years, I was having some people actually send me referrals, people that needed my insurance or investments, needed a part-time job. But I couldn't, I couldn't appreciate that because I was always worried and upset about those that said no. I looked at my income. I was making money. I came in this thing with $1,000 of my teacher's credit union. Two and a half years later, part-time, and it's not accumulated $42,000. My folks didn't ever have money like that. I didn't know nobody ever had any money like that. But I couldn't appreciate the dadgum money I was making because I kept worrying about the no's. I kept worrying about the rejection. I stayed upset all the time. Then all of a sudden I said, all you can do is all you can do. All right, dadgummit, you can't do no more than all you can do. You can't buy the program for people out there, right? You can't pay the dadgum premiums for them, right? I mean, I used to go in a home and I can talk, right? Right? And I used to go in a home, boy, and I'd let them all have it. Man, I'd made the greatest presentation you ever made. And then more than an hour or two later, I'd say, how does it sound? And they kept saying, no. And I'd put that old smile on my face. And I'd say everything you're supposed to. I'd say, Bill, it's been so great knowing you. I love your wife and your children. Never change your mind. Give me a call. You ever need life insurance? Great. Give me term insurance. Give me a call. You ever want an investment? You know, you ever need a part-time job? Give me a call. And I'd hit that door. And before I hit that door, I was already criticizing myself. I said, Art, you are such a dud. Why didn't you say this? Why didn't you answer this this way? Won't anybody buy from you? Why don't you just admit it? You're a dud, throwing the towel, and going back to coach football for a living. But then two years later, I said, Art, you've been thinking all wrong. You ain't no dud. You're you making money, right? You got term insurance, right? You got a good mutual fund program, right? You ain't no dud. All you can do is all you can do, right? Now, if you go in and you talk to this coach, he's a good coach, he knows a lot about coaching, but he don't know nothing about financial services, right? And if you walk in that house and you know you've done your research, you know that turns better than whole life, right? And if you walk in there and turn's better than whole life, when you walk in there and you own term and this guy that don't know nothing says no, does that all of a sudden make whole life better than term? No. Does that all of a sudden make you a dud? No. Took me two years to figure that out. I said, oh, all you can do is all you can do, right? You, you got a responsibility to be right, and I was. 
I sold term insurance. I sold what I own on my own life. I sold what everybody ought to buy. I said, all you can do is all you can do. So I changed my whole thinking around, revolutionized my business. Then I'd walk in a house two years later, and man, I'd give him the whole ball game. Man, I'd give him a presentation. I'd blow his butt out of the water, and two or three hours later, I'd say, how does it sound? And you know what? They kept saying no. They said no. But, but I'd put that old smile on my face. And I'd say everything you're supposed to. I'd say, Bill, it's been so great knowing you, love you, you children, never change your mind. Give me a call. You ever need term insurance, mutual fund down the road? You know anybody needs a part-time job? Give me a call. I'd say everything you're supposed to, and I'd hit that door. And, and before I hit that door, I was thinking, I said, you know what? Of all the policies I analyzed, and I must have analyzed a million, no, nah, two million last year, but of all the policies I analyzed, that guy's program had to be the worst. But, but you know what? It's just perfect for him. I don't, hey, I don't, I don't. I don't even like you no more. I don't want to see you again. What a dud. And, and then I went into management. For the next two years, I started recruiting people. And, and, and I'd go out there and I'd recruit this coach. And boy, he was all excited. Boy, he was full of vim and vigor like me. Boy, I used to love talking. Boy, I'd call him on the phone. He'd say, man, Art, this is great. I just love this business. I just hate fighting those ages. I just love it like you can't. And then all of a sudden, one of his clients said no. And, and I called him on the phone. And it sounded like a different person. He'd say, uh, well, Art, I just don't know. I just, I'm just, uh, I just, I thought I liked it, but I just don't reckon I'm a, I don't reckon I'm a salesperson. You know, I reckon I'm just going to throw in the towel. And I'd say, uh, Art, you are such a dud. What is wrong with you? Won't any, won't anybody be, just throwing a towel and going back coach. And I'd keep on going. I'd recruit this another coach, boy. And I'd bring him to a fast start school or super seminar like this. And he was so excited. He was bouncing off the wall. He was walking four feet off the floor. And he said, man, Art, I love this. I ain't never seen nothing like A.L. Williams. What's the next step? And I said, well, what we got to do, we got to go get somebody to go talk to, you know, let's make it. And he says, wait a minute. Well, wait a minute. You mean talk to somebody? You mean sell something? You mean insurance? What would my wife say? What would my mama say? It's okay for somebody like you, Art, to do this stuff, but not me. And I'd say, Art, you are such a dud. Won't anybody believe in you? Why don't you just admit it, Art? Just throwing a towel and going back and coach football for a living. But see, folks, I found out that all you can do is all you can do. And if you sell what's right, and I did, and if you offer the right kind of opportunity, and I did, that everybody's not going to buy, and everybody's not going to come to work, but enough are for you to become wealthy. All you can do is all you can do. All you can do is all you can do. But all you can do is enough.